In this tutorial you will learn how to code a login system with hardware ID authentication on registration in each login, serial key activation, license protection from multiple users of a single license, and don't forget to like and subscribe if this was helpful. Enjoy! Hey guys, it's Adel Edit here and welcome to another video after like three weeks of vacation for me at least. Next vacation will be um, like unlimited if I want so, but I hope I'm gonna go uh, studying at university or something like that. Um, so what we're gonna do today is create the encrypted login system or basically we're gonna um, yeah, we're gonna create an encrypted login system with hardware ID authentication and registration using the machine UID uh, which we can find in the registry. So it's really easy to grab that and you'll uh, protect your software from multi-user usage like you imagine you and a friend you want to have a software and but you don't want to pay like 200 bucks for it because it's 100 bucks for each person so you buy one copy and you share it so this protects from sharing but this also means that you have to support the people that like change stuff uh, or re reinstall windows and you get uh, another machine GUID so you have to support them so they can use it with the new one but it's still protected uh, I know from Xenoposter they do that so you can't like if you want to change the machine GUID you can do this only uh, once per day it says on the page if anybody of you knows what Gen uh, Xenoposter is anyways so they just have the technique like so you can't just uh, use the demo version for a few days and then delete it and may, um, like reinstall and it still doesn't work because uh, it, it, they have your HVID so you have to change the HVID to use it again this is what we're gonna create today and I talk too much again I, I know uh, I've seen from the analytics of my um, videos like I talk too much in the beginning that's why people don't, uh, don't like to watch it so let's get started right away with a quick presentation uh, what it's uh, what's going to happen so you can do this uh, with tables in the SQL database but I'm gonna do it with files because it's easier to show for me at least so here we have um, a GUID which is I didn't want to do that uh, which is, and I want to open it with, yeah, there we go. Okay, this is my GID, you, uh, it's protected, so you don't see it anyways. I'm going to delete it because, oh, let's, uh, let's show first if I try to register again. Here's my GID. Um, I try to make a new user. It doesn't even matter what I type here. And I need to create a serial because I protected with serial. Oh, there's key number two. Oops, I'm a bit shaky because I'm really tired. I'm uh, key NB2. Uh, register, it says your machine has already been registered. So I can't have two accounts with the same uh, HVID or machine UID. So therefore, I'm going to delete first um, my GUID from the list. And I have it open here. So I delete it, save it. Uh, there's a serial, so I need a serial to sign in. That's how it's made, and we're gonna do that also in this tutorial. And here's users, here's my user, and as you can see here, uh, there is my username and password. This is basically what we did in the previous tutorials. Um, if you want to know how to encrypt and decrypt, make a login system with encryption and decryption, we're using AES here. Uh, go check the video out. Link is in the description. Hopefully if I don't forget it uh, So here's my machine GUID. That's why they know um, if my GUID is not this one Or if I change it, I won't be able to log in So we'll see that because I don't remember the password I used for this uh, Test and here's the key I used so pretty neat Let me delete this user and I'll just um, So there's no user I can register uh, as I said, I need a key, a serial key, which will be gone after I use it. It's here, key number two. So let's make a user has, has one to three. And the serial is key number two. So register, you successfully registered. So I can now sign in. 
Okay, successfully logged in. As you can see, the serial is gone and doesn't go back. Uh, and the users, here's my new user. I could also have a user ID like one, two, three, and stuff. Then you just get them by ID because somebody could like you could uh, let them know their ID, so it's easier to find them. But anyways, so let's change uh, this machine to ID. So I deleted here something, and it won't let me log in again. Invalid machine to ID. See, because my computer has a different one from what was in the what's in the file. Um, it's not going to let me register. So this is the protection. Like a, a second user, like your friend or somebody's friend, can't use the account with them. And this is really cool. That's how you protect it uh, from multi-using. And now let's go ahead and do this. So for this one, I'll be using um, the registering form from a login system from the first, uh, from the previous tutorial with the AOS encryption. So if you want to go ahead and use that too, because it will be easier uh, for you to follow the tutorial if your stuff is like mine, uh, go ahead and download that. Download should be in the description if I don't forget it. Remind me guys if I forget something I say here to do, because um, editing takes long and after a few days you don't even know what the fuck was going on. <clears throat> okay, let's jump straight into it. I hope I can open it like that, I can't, and this one was it anyways. Mm, it's going to open all that stuff, and there we go, yes, ah, this code, I, I don't really remember what was going on here, I hope I can handle this, and I gotta go soon, that's pretty, uh, no. not good, okay. So the first thing uh, I want to do is make the HVRND class so we can grab the hardware ID. So therefore I'll uh, be, and I pro I'm probably really loud towards the microphone because it's right at my uh, mouth, so anyways. Okay, so you want to right click on this here and add a new item and add a class and call it HVID or something like that. I'll call it HVID because this is how I did it and it's easier for me now. Um, don't need these. I believe we need uh, collections generic, I'm not sure though. Um, and we need Microsoft Win32. Okay, this is really important because this helps us getting the uh, HVAD. Okay, make a uh, um, static string, a static string method, and get uh, call it get machine GID because then you know what it is, or basically you call the function like get it, like get the machine GID. Like you're, you're uh, forcing somebody to do this, and this is easier to call it. Uh, same like calling booleans is something something like is machine GID valid and then you get like the response it's true or not and you can simply like in, in brackets and in round brackets you can say is machine GID then do this if it's not then do this so it makes stuff easier anyways uh, less talking oops less talking more doing because I need to be fast and I can't upload uh, videos longer than uh, 50 minutes at once. So the location is software code somewhere again from uh, somewhere from Stack Overflow. So uh, and I hope I type everything wrong because like this is the main key to doing this. String name machine machine GID Using registry local machine key machine x64 view registry key dot open base open base key local machine and registry view 
registry 64. Not sure if, so my machine is 64 bits for my windows. I'm not sure if you have to change it for 32 bits to both. So you could uh, make both and like if it, if it gives an exception, you make it uh, try the other one. Quark into using registry key RK or registry key gene x and sub key location okay so okay this gives me errors and stupid okay I open it of course get this one back do I need one more no of course of course and I open this one of course like this and yeah now, okay, yes, the string doesn't give anything back yet. When we have this one, we make an if rk is equal to null, so if we didn't get shit from it, then we throw new key not found exception. This is actually not really required because, or like, uh, I got the code from a uh, console application so there you can like display message what's wrong and this will be displayed I'm not sure though I'm not handling things like I'm not handling things like these really for each specific I used to do that for each specific but that's just time wasting I think um, at least when you do stuff for uh, for yourself. Of course, if you do it for somebody, they should know what's wrong exactly. But if you do it for yourself, like right now in the tutorial, this is basically what's happening. And if it doesn't, then yeah, return machine machine jd to string there we go okay so this is done and this should be yeah okay uh call it hvid the namespace i call it hvid gbr for grabber i don't know if it's the right um yes uh it should be working anyway so Okay, so now we go into rec form, and now I need to figure out uh, what we want to change here. And we need a lot more because first we want to know if the uh, GID uh, been registered already. So this is what I did before. This means. So this is if the username is too small uh, or too short, better to say. I want to figure out how I'm going to do this. If the user exists, do I have that? I don't have if the user exists. Okay. So let's jump into this. Uh, if directory dot exists data users and I don't have this in these so I need it here first uh, if data exists in yeah. text uh, if it exists then we show a message box that the user already show that the user ex already exists mm. the user already exists here and user.txt 